Hello, I'm Donald McCauley and welcome to MedicsVoices.com, where we talk to the key opinion leaders in health and medicine around the world. Today we're in Switzerland and I'm talking to Nicholas Sen. Although you're in Switzerland, Nicholas, I know that you have had an amazing and very interesting career and I note that you were in Papua New Guinea. Tell us a little bit about your research career and how you got to where you are at the moment. Yeah, thank you. The, uh, yeah, in fact, I don't like straight lines. So that's probably why I have a, uh, I, I took the long way to, to came where I am now. So originally, I'm trained as a GP, uh, a training that I, I have followed in Switzerland. Uh, but after I was always interested in tropical medicine and in research, and I was looking for an appointment somewhere in the world. And uh, it came up that it was uh, Papua New Guinea. Uh, but I was working for the University of Australia, of, of uh, Melbourne in Australia. And uh, I was based for three years in Papua New Guinea. And that's where really I, I learned tropical medicine, but also epidemiology and research and community medicine. And uh, in fact, it was really uh, complementary to what I have done uh, as a GP. Um, that's why when I came back to Switzerland, uh, it was the perfect combination. I had a training as a GP, as well as a training as an epidemiologist. So I switched again to general practice, but with a more broader perspective, I, I think that's something that really interests me, not just the general practitioner, but the whole primary care setting. And uh, in that, it changed a bit the, the perspective, but that was really my work for the last 10, let's say 12 years, to work on primary care, new model of cares, but how we can improve the, the system, how we can improve delivery of care, of care in, uh, in the community. Uh, and I think that's how I came here. Uh, officially, I'm the head of the Department of Family Medicine at Unisante. Uh, and it's a great opportunity to explore a, a lot of different fields, uh, but not, not just only family medicine, but really family medicine as a part of a, a bigger picture of primary care. I know you're interested in different models of primary care. And as we look at the future of primary care, and in many countries, it, it's quite uncertain. Tell me about your thoughts on the different models of primary care. If I look at that from Switzerland, I must admit that I'm a bit desperate <laughs> in the sense that uh, the models of primary care in Switzerland have not evolved a lot in the last, let's say, 20 years. It's still very focused on the work of physicians, uh, very little interproportionality and little change and uh, we don't we don't need to, we can't blame really the general practitioner for that uh, i think it's also the whole system which is organized around this the way you are paying the physicians or you're paying the systems allow only the physicians to do something so i would say that the, the model in switzerland is very conservative with really only uh, gps and medical what we call medical assistants it's a bit of polyvalent role between uh, administration and some basic uh, technical acts, uh, but there is no nurses, there is no uh, psychologists, uh, no social workers like we can find in other countries. And uh, I think that's really what uh, interests me is how we can develop this new model of care in, in Switzerland. And for that, we need to look what is happening uh, in other countries. I don't think there is a, an ideal model. You have to develop the model that is suited to the to the local context to, that serves the local population. But still, I think there is a large uh, margin for improvement in Switzerland. I, I, in fact, in Switzerland, if you look at the GPs, uh, they are paying. They are paid according to the time they are spending with the patients. Uh, so the more time you spend with the patients, the more more money you earn. And that introduced bias. It has some advantages because you are very uh, uh, much in favor of being available for the, for your patients. But on the opposite, maybe you are doing too much things or spending too much time uh, with with, uh, with your patients. So I think that's really the limit of the systems, and that's really the, the thing we need to to modify to compare with other countries. Uh, that's really I think the the interest of doing research on new model of care so that you can compare with France with. Netherlands with the UK, with uh, Canada or other countries. And that's very interesting. And it's very interesting to see when you talk to GPs in Switzerland, they are really astonished that it can work uh, in a different way. Uh, they are, we have always done 
uh, medicine like that. So why should it change? So yes, but uh, we have a problem of cost. It's very costly in Switzerland. And we still have a lot of problems for patients to, to get a physician. Uh, so I think that means that something has to change. And having new model of care is the way to, 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 to think about that. And uh, very uh, I mean, we can do a lot of theories of what are the best model of care. But what's interesting is how you put that into practice. And that's exactly what we're working on for about five years, uh, six years in, in, in the region where I'm working. So in the partnership with the public health authorities, we are developing new model of care and we're trying to, to put them into practice with, uh, with uh, GPs and other uh, nurses. Now we have implemented nurses in facilities. Seeing that from other countries, say, what, you are not, you are just starting now with nurses. So, yeah, we're just starting. And, uh, but uh, uh, the, the constraints of the system are so important. We just don't know how to pay them. So you have to, to beg with the political politicians to, to, to give us money to pay the nurses because there is no other, other, other way to, to go along with that. So, so that's a bit, the, 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 I think, my, my thought about the, the money of care. And we, we need to take the physicians with us, which is probably a, a, one of the major problems. How can we explain that the new model would be better than the older one? Because if we say, yeah, but it, it, if it's going to be like in UK, I've heard it's terrible in UK, so I don't want to, to work uh, like a salary for, for, the, for the government. So, so no, no, uh, we're not talking about that. Uh, we're taking just the best part, the other models. Uh, but, and uh, the other thing which I really like is that you have a, 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 a true collaboration between the health profession on the ground uh, academics and health authorities. And when you start to have all these people together, you can start to do something. Uh, if you avoid one of the three key uh, players, it doesn't work. It's interesting looking at these new models of care. So if we were, if the government was to give you unlimited resources, what would your team look like? <laughs> um, I think the first thing is the size of the team. It should not be too big. I really believe that uh, we need a team with different skills, but not too big. And the different skills that we need, it's probably around, of course, the GPs, uh, nurses, uh, agrotherapy. We often forget about what they can do. Uh, it's very polyvalent. Psychologists, uh, social worker. But it's still not sufficient, I think, to... to think these models in terms of professions. We need also to think about in terms of roles and activities. And uh, because sometimes you have two persons with different backgrounds who can do the same job, but sometimes not. Depends on the context. So the other thing which is for me very important if I would have unlimited resources is first to bring all these people together and to redefine the roles in the context of, of, uh, of work. I think that's what I would do, um, but uh, certainly they won't give me uh, unlimited resources. But uh, that's another question. But I think I will really try to put not only different professions, but to redefine really roles with the target to be at, uh, available for, 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 for the population. And uh, maybe uh, um, another element I would add is to have really um, uh, a vision on population health at the local level. We, all, we always see population health as a public health, something at the national level, whatever. But I think we really need to develop uh, the sense of population health at the very local context. Which population I am serving? Do I know this population? Sometimes it's just a few thousand people. But the primary care facility should know which population they are serving. We know there have been experiments, like in UK with the community-oriented primary care, things like that. I think it's interesting because you bring the people with you and you don't only see one patient after the other, but you really try to uh, give uh, good care to a whole population. And you can start to be proactive. So I think that's the, the other element, it, uh, not only the roles and the professions, but also uh, the way it's organized and the, the population vision uh, uh, at the local level. Now, as part of this new vision for primary care, you've been bringing in people internationally and uh, conferences are a terrific way of doing that. There are two aspects of that that interested me. Firstly, that you've brought people from 
around the world, but secondly, that it's a Francophone population. Are there particular issues within the Francophone group that are different to the Anglophone group? We haven't that done that uh, because they are necessarily different. Because I think in Quebec, for example, they're probably quite close to uh, Anglophone countries. But the, the first reason why we have done like a, a sub Francophone groups is because it's allowed to bring people around the table who would not come if you speak English. If, if we are among academics who are used to speak English, and it's not a problem, but you are only among academics. If you want to talk to ground people and to bring them to discuss, you need to speak French. I think that was the, really the first reason to, to, to do that. Maybe at a broader scale, there might be some differences uh, in the way the, the healthcare system is organized between the Francophone uh, uh, countries and the Anglophone countries. But uh, uh, for, 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 for this specific uh, association that we created, that was not the first aim to, to, to think that uh, uh, there is really uh, major differences, but just to, the, the, the purpose is to bring all these people together. That's fascinating. That what you're saying is that you can have the academic presentations in English, but if you want to have a conversation, you really must have it in people's first language. Absolutely. I think they don't come to academic conferences. Uh, like if you have a, a nurse from a, from a primary care institution, they won't come. There is something very intimidating uh, in academic conferences. It's very formal usually. There is codes. People don't know there's codes. And they won't talk. Uh, and probably they're not even not aware and interested to come. So, I mean, I agree. Uh, I think also from the, at the governmental level, they, they, they won't come if it's in English for most of them. Now, let's talk about something slightly different, and that is the difficulties of creating a research culture. Yeah. I mean, it's difficult when you have small units of general practice. Yeah, the, the, I think this is a problem that we're facing everywhere, even in countries where they have bigger, uh, bigger uh, practices. And I think it has also to do with the, the speciality of, of primary care. Uh, it's not seen as an academic discipline. I, th I think still now there is still a, a big gap between cardiology and the major disciplines. People know what it is. To define what is primary care and even more to do an academic, um, to have an academic perspective on primary care, it's more difficult. I think that's one of the problems we are facing. And uh, we often, I think uh, you also had that uh, sometimes the question, what are you doing research on primary care? But can, what can we research? Uh, what can we search on, on primary care? And uh, that's quite interesting uh, as a question. And so, yeah, but. Uh, uh, and as soon as you say, I'm going to, to, to make a research project on elderly people, say, yeah, but we have geriatrics. So why are you doing research on that? And you have to explain because it's a different approach. Uh, the, the, the prevalence of disease is different, et cetera. So we need different research. Uh, and uh, I think that's really the, the difficulty we still have to explain what is primary care. So uh, to, to a broader audience and in that to define what is research within, within this, uh, uh, this era of primary care. Uh, now we start to have uh, journals, uh, good journals, probably that helps uh, to explain that. But uh, maybe the last point is about the health professionals themselves. As soon as they start clinical practice, they are lost usually for, for research because they can't afford to be just part-time in the practice and the rest of the time working on research because they don't have money. Uh, or it's very rare to find a position where you can do both. And very often you are overwhelmed with clinical practice and the research come afterwards at night or during the weekends. And after five years, you stop. And I think this problem is really worldwide. Uh, so we try to promote that. And I think in other countries, it's also happening uh, very soon when they start, when they, they, they leave medical school, uh, we start to bring them to do medical doctorates, uh, MDs or, or PhDs even sometimes, trying to keep them in the system. But the nightmare is how you combine your training as a physician and still keep a, 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 an insight into research. But we try to do that. And so we try to make, um, uh, how you say that, professional development plans with, with a younger, very young physicians who, who want to have both careers. 
but uh, it's, it's it's very difficult. So I think we need to to act at different levels mm, to explain better what is primary care and why what are the specificities of research in primary care. But also we we need to capture the the young physicians and uh, to to promote uh, research with them and uh, to develop career plans with them. Nicholas, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed for sharing all these issues. What really struck me was the importance of conversation. Yes, absolutely. And talking agree. in one's native language. So, la prochaine, prochaine fois, il faut parler en français. Merci à vous. À la prochaine. Thank you very much. À la prochaine fois.